WSMESM Enlightenment Radio. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is the great Doc P coming at you live and direct from the WSME studios. And it's another edition of the Sunday Night Spotlight. And tonight we have for you a really, really big show. And uh, hey, as always on the Sunday Night Spotlight, as you know, we like to bring uh, people up on the forum that uh, that I call them people of interest, okay? And when I say that, I mean, you know, people that you should be interested in, <laughs> right? People that have something to say, all right? Either they have a product or a service or, you know, something that's going on that you definitely need to know about. And, you know, all of us here at SM Enlightenment Radio, we are all about uh, self-improvement health and wellness, and, hey, literacy, especially financial literacy, which is a very, very, very important thing because they don't teach us that in schools. And, you know, a lot of us have to learn the hard way, you know, how it is that we navigate and deal when it comes to finances. So, you know, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I have a very, very special guest who is all about the finances and all about the financial services, all right? I'm going to bring to you a brother named Greg Skeen, okay? And, um, hey, he's uh, the uh, head principal of Control Your Route, all right, which is a financial services company. And so without any further ado, let me just bring him on in. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Greg Skeen, what's going on, brother? Oh, man, I'm blessed and highly favored. How, how you doing, Doc? Hey, doing well, doing well, man. Welcome to the spotlight. You know, it's 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 great having you here. It's an honor having you here. I was uh, looking looking up on you and reading up on some of your information. And, um, you know, I really want to get into who Greg Skeen is. But before we do that, all right, if you could give us a... Uh, uh, a quick overview of Control Your Route, the company. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, C Control Your Route, like you said, is a financial services company, and you know what we do is we we go back into the community um, and educate people on money, educate people on wealth creation, wealth protection, um, because, like you said, it's it's something that's not taught um, in a majority of households. So yeah. what we do as an organ as an organization is we go back in and we teach and we educate people on financial literacy, um, because you know too many people rely on GoFundmes and and barbecues and fish fries, um, yeah. so we we change that trajectory through education. Wow, wow, that's 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 really a a beautiful thing, and hey, you know, it's so much more of that is needed in the world, you know. So it's 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 a great thing that that you're pioneering this type of thing. But, you know, as we know, or as I know, and as everybody else is getting ready to find out, you didn't always start in this industry. You know, very true. you actually had a very, very interesting route that you went to get to control your route. <laughs> if we can say, you know, and um, so as I understand, you started out, um, more in the tech industry and was actually doing great things in that, you know, I mean, your affiliations with Disney and Tesla and, and, and all of that, I mean, doing really, really big things. I mean, how did, how did you start out into that, into the tech industry as an engineer? Uh Absolutely. So I got to take it back until, you know, I, I asked my parents this question when I was younger. I was like, uh -huh. you know, because I got into the space, you know, and I'm realizing it like in high school and I'm like going back. I was like, man, how did I get into the tech space? And, you know, my parents were telling me, hey, you need to take remote controls apart, take toys and things apart and always figured out how to put them back together and they would work. Yeah. So. I, I, I took that subconsciousness because I tell people, you know, your, your subconscious mind is between zero and seven. So that's what I did between zero and seven. And that is what played into my adulthood. So I'm like big into psychology and stuff as well. But um, I, I actually got in the break of my career was actually in education. 
when I when I first graduated high school, I got into the educational aspect and teaching people how to use computers. And, you know, these are people that are in the job market. They're, you know, they're, you know, that they're looking for work and they didn't know how to, you know, use a computer resume, stuff like that. Oh, so I was teaching those classes. So the foundation of what I do and who I am as a person is service when it comes to education and um you know, helping people. So, so how um, long ago was that? Like when, when you, when you started, this was in 2009, this was in 2009. So okay. oh, what is that? So yeah, a lot of years ago, <laughs> you know, we're, we're not trying to date you or anything, you know, you know what? Nobody know how young you really are, out here, you know, but it's, that's an interesting time also because at, at that time, you know, it, it's like the, the whole information uh, network and highway and all of that was really, it was, it was becoming very apparent that there was no avoiding it by Absolutely. 2009. You know what no, I mean? It's a huge, huge point because like you said, a lot of people were just not opening their eyes to you know, the IT industry, but what's crazy is also that it was, we were in the middle of a recession then, 2007, yeah. 2008 crash. So a lot of people opened up their eyes to other opportunities. And, you know, I just, you know, I always tell people during a recession, you know, that's when a lot of people, you know, opportunities are created if you're, you know, you're around the right people and you're, you know, your eyes are open and keeping your options open. So, yeah, so that's, that's how I got started into the industry. And then, you know, I tell people I, uh, I worked at the University of Florida um, on accident. I give 100% credit to my my then girlfriend, now wife, um, on taking ah. that opportunity. <laughs> so, nice. Um, so yeah, yeah she's like, hey, held on to her, huh? <laughs> oh uh, yeah, we yes, uh, we just celebrated um, nine years of marriage two weeks ago. Been together 14 years. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yep, Congratulations. but. Long story short, man, is like I got into the space. Um, I tell people, you know, you can get into a lot of different industries. Um, you can do a lot of different things. But I tell people I'm also a byproduct of mentors, mentors and coaches. Um, I just cho- I just realized mentorship and coaching was a um, was a cheat code. It was a cheat code because if, if someone has already achieved a level of success in that whatever they were doing, I want right. to learn from that person so that I don't have to recreate the wheel and make all the mistakes. So I just happen to get mentors, a phenomenal mentors in the tech space um, to help accelerate my growth and my, my, uh, my, my career in the tech space. So that's kind of how I got, how I got kicked off. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting thing because, you know, um, we, we all have mentors like uh, a lot of times, all around us and some of them are a lot more visible than others you know what i'm saying but it's like you know it it, it really takes uh just having sort of an open mind you know and and that that type of positive disposition to to be able to identify that you know the same thing with opportunities you know it's like the, the way that you're looking at certain things it's like hey you know it could be a problem or it can be an opportunity you know absolutely you know, absolutely and, and you know and there there are there are people always around us that we can learn from that can become a mentor if sometimes they're hey you know you just listened <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep i always say i can always learn something from everyone yeah I, I can find something to learn from 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 a majority of people you know and and i just that's the just the mindset that i i kind of took throughout my career in the in, in you know in the tech space right so now, so you, so you came up in Brooklyn. I was, I was originally born in Brooklyn. Yep. <laughs> nice. And, uh, you know, my do or die. Do or die. <laughs> nice. And then family moved down to Florida. You know, mom wanted us to have a, you know, to be in a better, uh, just put us in a better situation. You know, we were, we were in the rough part of town, obviously. Um, yeah. but Hey, I wanted to, you know, she wanted the, the, the best for me and my brother. So she moved us down to the complete opposite of, uh, of Brooklyn and <laughs> in, wow. the, in the country and horses and, you know, things of that nature, um, cool. out in Ocala, Ocala, Florida, um, literally the horse capital of the world. Like, <laughs> so, uh, so grateful, like, you know, growing up, I'm like, man, you know, going through high school and stuff, I'm like, man, why are we here? But then as I got older, I'm like, man, you know, having my own kids now, I'm like, okay, I see why she did that. And, you know, 
and just so grateful that she thought about us from that aspect and um you know just being just being a superstar of a mom yeah it's <laughs> you know i mean that's that's a beautiful thing so it's like coming up in that in that kind of household so i i can i can imagine that the encouragement was always like definitely there for you then i mean you know because absolutely everything everything was uh, everything was about you know school and education and you know just trying to be the best that you know who you can be and um you know it's the same thing with my i i teach those same principles to my kids so it's you know i, I tell people that, like growing up we weren't allowed to watch tv on the weekdays so it was like uh -oh. <laughs> monday through friday monday through friday until school was out you could not watch tv no video games nothing like that so um it was first i was like man that's kind of harsh but now i'm like now raising again raising my own kids and seeing the other side of the mirror i'm like okay i'm gonna implement those same things because i've let them watch tv during the week and you know different things change and behaviors and and focus and things like that i'm like okay boom i'm just going to implement what you know what i what i did growing up isn't that something and, and and hey and if you start them out like that from the beginning and they ain't missing anything you know it's yep. it's one stage especially we're in the digital age on top of that <laughs> yeah exactly because then a lot of them they're just on their phones yep. yep you know and you know they're just on their phones i i noticed that with my grandson it's like he just he, you know, he just sits there on his phone and it's like when he stays with me, I'm like putting a TV in his room thinking that that's something that he's going to enjoy. But he's not even turning it on. He's just on his phone, <laughs> he's looking at his phone the whole time. You know? so. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I understand that you, you, you did have some challenges, you know, uh, while you while you are a younger man. OK. And yeah. um, and, you know, it, it's. Everyone has a has a story. You have quite a success story there because I understand that you had some health challenges at one point. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I I always give you know I give all thanks and glory to God absolutely. Um, because for me um, I grew up I was born with a condition um, called Chiari malformation, which the non technical term or verbiage for that is the tail of my brain is actually. Um, it was too large for my skull. So meaning, you know, you always hear the thing, Hey, you you have, you have big brains. So I, my, my brain was literally <laughs> had a, had a large brain. Yeah. That your brain was actually too big for your head. Didn't fit in my head. So, um, you know, what's crazy about this is, you know, growing up, you know, I, I kind of really realized it maybe middle school and in high school. And I just thought it was normal. Like, Every time, you know, you hang out with your, your friends, you laugh. And every time I laugh, I would get a sharp pain uh, down the right side of my body. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'm just laughing too hard. I'm like, it, it must be that funny. Wow. So um, I kind of just lived through it. And I just became, you know, what I thought was just became normal. And as I'm playing football in high school, and I'm like, okay, cool. This will this will go away soon one day. And like I said, I, I give a hundred percent, um, you know, outside of God, I give a hundred percent credit to my wife because she's like, Hey, this isn't normal. <laughs> um, and because my wife, you know, has a medical background and just extreme intuition when it comes to health and wellness, um, she's like, Hey, you should go see a neurologist. And, you know, that's when I got diagnosed in 2013. Um, I had surgery by probably the, the most world known um, neurosurgeon in the world um, out at University of Florida. And, you know, I just, I gave it to God. I was like, Hey, if this is what I need to do, let's do it. And man, like I gotta tell you, I'm super humbled because um, catching it at the age that I caught it. Um, most, most people don't catch it till later in life. So, um, and it, it could be severely impacting when it comes to developmental and, and things like that. So, um, man, I just, I, I just have a strong support team when it comes to my wife, um, obviously family and things like that. Um, wouldn't have been able to get it, you know, get through that without them. So did that going through that, did that influence or have something to do with you deciding to, um, sort of make a transition from the tech industry into financial services? Like how did that come about? Yeah. So, so the surgery was in 2013. Um, 
I, I didn't transition into financial services until 20, 2020. Oh, okay. Um, so it was, it was later down in life, but it, it also was, it was, it was part of the reason why I did get into the industry because I'm like, man, if somebody that, you know, in, in my shoes, if they didn't have the surgery or, you know, this would be impacting, which would cause them, you know, challenges later in life if they were looking to get insurance and, you know, things like that. So, um, it, it definitely plays a role because what I tell people is when it comes to what I do, you know, your health is, is a huge component, right? It's a huge, is a huge component. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate for, for when it comes to, you know, health and, and things of that nature. Wow. You know, and, and the fact that you, you know, you not only go through this, but you, you share this and, and, and that you, you know, got into teaching at first. So it's like, yeah, it, it seems I, I wanna, you, you've always been a teacher. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the reason why that, that I, that is important for me because in, in 2008, just before I graduated high school, I actually had to make a decision. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to a vocational school okay. and I basically chose whether I wanted, you know, I was, <laughs> I wanted to play football. I wanted to go, I wanted to be a professional athlete. Um, yeah. I, would, I either was like, Hey, I want to go play football or I want to just stick with the career in tech. And I'm grateful that I, you know, God led me down the route of the tech industry because with a brain surgery, I would have never been able to play ball. Right. Yeah. So going down that path and, you know, doing the, the things that I've done in it was, Again, I, I, it's not, you know, it's not, it's not by, not by default. I just, I, I just felt like God created it and that's, you know, that's what he wanted me to do. Otherwise he wouldn't have aligned it the way that he did. Yeah, it, it, it is. It is uh, fascinating the way that, excuse me, the way that God, uh, you know, takes us through these, you know, these journeys, you know, these, these different things. So now, the whole concept of uh, of your company control your route, um, mm-hmm. you know, because it, it it seems as though you know you uh, you've been on quite a journey yourself. So and Absolutely. and and it, and the whole uh, title of the business sort of implies that hey, that we all go through some type of journey, you know, and and and. Hey, this is this is a better way to to have more control over hey the the route that your life takes, right? Absolutely. So yeah, the the you know the inspiration from the name is just like you said. It's hey, how do I go out and control where I want to go? Whether it's time freedom, money freedom, family freedom, what whatever you want in life, because I believe everyone has a route in which they're trying to go. They're trying to go somewhere, right? We're yeah. all we're all on a journey to something. Um, control your route, the foundation of it is because regardless of where you're trying to go, everyone needs to have the foundation of financial literacy, right? So the foundation of financial literacy is that's, that's, that's how you, you know, that's the foundation because you could either build, you know, you can see the, the world's biggest towers, buildings, you know, either they can build it on sand or they could build it on bedrock, right? Because yeah. if you build it on sand, again, it's going to shift, it's going to crack, it's going to break, and you're going to have to tear it down and start over. I want people to build their foundation on, on bedrock, and that foundation is financial literacy. And then you can build your build your build whatever you want to go to through life. You can build it from there. So that's the, the inspiration behind Control Your Route, is I want people to control the route to where they're going, but I want them to have a foundation of financial literacy. I, I think that it's 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 a fascinating thing. I can't wait to really get into the whole meat of what uh, your business is all about, you know. Um, and you know, we're, we're gonna we're gonna bounce to a quick break, and then uh, when we come back, you know, we really just sink our teeth into control your route. You know, now that we we now that we know the man, <laughs> you know. And, and and how it is that you got here, which is a pretty fascinating story in itself, because it's like, wow, you know, um, you know, the thing that I really like is that you demonstrated that you're really all about the people in your community, you know, um, because absolutely, because you could have just stayed in the tech industry and just made a, a lot of money for yourself and and just 
hooked your own family up and and that that would have been that you know uh, good yeah you're, you're absolutely right and you know to that point you know the transition for me was again i was just at a season where i was trying to become educated i was like man i just need the information and i tell you like i, I want to tell people i'm a byproduct of of mentors someone sat me down gave me the information and for me he said hey you can continue in tech you have a phenomenal guy personal uh you have core values principles things of that nature you know you're obviously in an industry that's never going to go anywhere your family's happy you know you're going to take vacations you're going to you're going to have a you're going to have an amazing life right and for me you know what i'm doing now is i've never i've never seen it done in my family so i'm, I'm like okay cool but i want to continue to grow he literally asked me one question man and this this one question changed my entire life okay he said greg you're making you know, a multiple six figures a year, um, great life. But he said in 20 years from now, your son will be 25 years old. I have a five-year-old, my oldest. He said, you'll be, t- uh, your son will be 25. Can you take your job? Can you take your title and everything you worked for in the tech industry and hand it over to your son and allow him to pick up where you left off? I get chills every time I ask, every time I hear it because that one question told me I could do whatever I want to do in this tech industry, but as long as I'm working for somebody, I'm not controlling my route. That's right. Talk about it, brother. Talk about it. Yep. So, man, I just I just made a decision at that point to get into this space to to like you said to to rejuvenate and elevate and and help other people control their route. Because I know a lot of people in the tech space, they sit there 20, 30, 40 years and all they have is a 401k to show for it when they're done. I just like, man, that's just not me. (laughs) That's just not me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know, and, and a lot of people are are like hugely successful and like they neglect their families, don't even know their families, you know? And it's, Oh, I used to work 12, 14, 15, 16 hour days. Yeah. And I was just like, I want to be around my kids more. My oldest, I didn't spend as much time as I wanted with them, but my other two, I'm I'm here all day. <laughs> <laughs> you always all day. Ain't, ain't tired of looking at you now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, that that that's kind of how I transitioned into the space. And you know, again, after the break, we'll we'll dive in deep and you know that's bring right. some value. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with Greg Skeen of control your route all right and uh hey we're, we're gonna really get into the whole business and 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 everything and uh, uh tell people about the the different types of services and everything that that are offered through the company and all that good stuff so don't go nowhere it's a sunday night spotlight we'll be right back right after this It is WSMESM Enlightenment Radio. You're checking out the Sunday Night Spotlight. Comes at you every Sunday night at 9 o'clock p.m. Right here on WSMESM Enlightenment Radio. Feel good radio at its finest. Whereas we say positivity is everything. And, you know, besides some positivity, you know, also uh, education is everything, too. You know, because you, you got to know what's going on. And, um, hey, uh, this control your route is all about empowering people with the information. And right here, we have Greg Skeen with us. All right. He's our guest on the Sunday Night Spotlight. And he is the principal. He is the guy uh, that brings you control your route, right, which is a financial services company that's all about helping people uh, through a, a lot of different aspects now when i go to the website okay which is controlyourroute.com all right um 
the first thing that we see is there's a very important question that's asked. What are everyday families worried about but not talking about? <laughs> that's heavy, brother. Absolutely. Yep. That is heavy, you know. A lot of people, I mean, I know for a fact, I mean, just when it just comes to insurance, you know, nobody, a lot of people, I can't say nobody, but a lot of people just try to avoid the whole thing altogether. They don't want to think about it. They don't want to talk about it. You know, they they sure don't want to plan for it, you know, but, you know, everything, everything in this, everything in this world is cause and effect. So (laughs) very true. You know, it's so when I look at this and and I see everything being broken down, right. With uh, like we said, with insurance, like leaving family, with a financial burden, all right? It says here 73% of Americans are likely to die leaving their family with unpaid mortgages, car loans, student loans, and credit cards. And man, that is such a true fact. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's heavy. And like you said, a lot of people avoid the conversation. They, they say, hey, if I talk about it later, maybe it'll, it'll get easier. You know, it's unfortunate, like the, the conversation doesn't get easier, but uh, yeah. it also is, you know, I, I see it as more as a maturity thing, especially if you have dependents or people that are relying on you. Um, it's one of those conversations you just, you know, but I also believe it's the person you're having the conversation with, right? It's not like, hey, you know, it's easy to have the conversation with anybody, but, you know, and with a trained professional, um, you know, we're able to, to ask questions in a way where you know it's it's still maybe a tough conversation but you're able to get the information and the the details out of what's important to that person right right because that's really what it comes down to is like you know you could have a lot of different responsibilities assets liabilities things like that but what is important to you right and like you said 73 percent of people like they they leave this earth and they leave debt to people so um it's one of those things where You know, it's like, okay, we all know it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. When, right. It's a matter of when. It's one of the things we're going to, so you might as well plan for it so that way it's not, it's not being planned for you. Right. So, you know, when it, when it comes to, you know, just, you know, loved ones. And I think a lot of people in, you know, prayers up to, to anyone who lost someone through, you know, the last couple of years with the uncertainty of the pandemic and things like that. But (sighs) You know, a lot of those people they you know they didn't plan to 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 pass away. Yeah. And if they had you know you know debt and things like that, that's just going to get passed down to the next of you know the next of uh you know the next family member, spouse, whatever the case may be. And then you couple that with the recession, where people are already you know you know there's a, it's crazy. There's a stat right now that fifty eight percent of people are living paycheck to paycheck. And 30% of them are people that make a quarter of a million a year and higher. 58% of of people. You make that kind of money and still. Hey, I, I, uh, I'll put it this way. I've experienced it. So it's true (laughs) with, without the education, it's, it's easy for that. It's easy for it to happen. Because think about it, you're taking your same habits. As if you make thirty thousand a year, it's going to pass up to sixty thousand, one hundred twenty thousand, one hundred fifty thousand, two hundred thousand. But you still have the same thirty thousand dollar habits. They're just going to trickle up, and you're just going to continue to to increase your uh, you're going to increase your your expenses and not save and not. If you don't have a savings habit at thirty thousand, you're not going to have a savings habit at two hundred thousand, right? And then, you know, obviously some of the things we can't control, like gas and inflation is up 8.6%, food is up, you know, everything is up. So I say all that to say is like, if you, if, if, if it's not a conversation that you have, then, in, you know, you don't plan to have, I mean, you don't have it in the near future, you know, when do you plan for it? Because think about it, especially in, you know, the minority community, especially in the African-American community, when someone passes away and they own a house, and they own the house, you know, what is the first thing the siblings are fighting about? Hey, 
do we pay for this house? Do we sell it? I want to keep it. You know, you right. pay for it. No, you pay for it. And then now you just have tension within the family. And I see that over and over again with friends and 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 some family. Yeah. It's like one wants to sell it, sell, 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 and another one is like, no, memories, this is memories, memories. Family. Yep. And you know. But then it's like, okay, you want to keep it, but now can you afford it? Because now it's another bill if you, you know, if the house isn't paid for. Let me let me give you a strategy real quick when it comes to how wealthy people avoid that whole conversation that I just told you about. <laughs> how do they avoid that whole conversation? So the first type of, there's three different types of policies when it comes to insurance. You have term policies, you have ROP, and you have permanent policies. Okay. Right? So the first type of policy I'm going to talk about is a term policy. A term policy will last 10, 20, 30 years. Again, the upside to it is you can go get a quarter of a million, a half a million, two million dollars on a policy, and it's affordable. The downside, it does expire in 20, 30 years. Just think about it like car insurance. We pay 150, 200 bucks a month in car insurance if we never get into an accident. Right. You know, again, we don't, you know, it, we don't ever get any money back. But again, same thing. If we get into an accident, we need to make a claim. The insurance company pays. Term policy is the exact same way. So, so then it can expire and so that the money that you put into it, you never see. Correct. Yeah. So a term policy, that's exactly how it works. Yep. So it's just like, you know, do you have, do you know how many people get a check back from their car insurance if they never get into an accident? <laughs> it's, it's the same yeah. thing. People look at it as a negative way, but you're already paying bills, uh, insurance on things that you don't get back. But why not use one that can actually create wealth for your family? Right. right. So here's the strategy. It's not a coincidence that mortgages are 30 years and term policies are 30 years. Wow. <laughs> so what wealthy people do is as soon as they buy a home or an asset of value, they also buy a term policy. So if they don't get to pay off that policy, that, that home or that asset in 30 years, the term policy pays it off for them if they pass away within those 30 years or they become sick. So now the policy pays off the asset and now your family never has to argue about it. Wow. That's, that's pretty brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's like, okay, cool. Again, like I tell people, it's, it's information. Like somebody truly has to sit down with you and educate you on this stuff. A lot of people, insurance people you know it's the industry that creates the most millionaires but it's also the easiest industry. You know, if you're not with the right agent or the right person, they could also, you know, they can not provide you the full value that you, that you need for your family. For me, this is about strategy. I, I think it's an honor to be able to educate people on this stuff because generational wealth is generational. Meaning yeah. the families that have money and they do right by it, they're going to pass down the money, the Rockefellers, the, you know, you know the, the families that have money, they're going to continue to pass it down. But on the flip side, generational poverty is also generational. Yeah. Generational exactly. poverty is also generational. So in generational wealth is not only in the money, it's also in the knowledge that's passed down from generation to generation. So I take I take what I do so serious because it's not I'm, I'm educating the person in front of me, but I'm also educating their kids and their grandchildren. Right. So so when we when we talk about, again, you know, financial burden and, you know, Hey, why not get a, let's say, for example, a term policy, for example, some people say term policies are bad, but Hey, if this term policy paid off your house and all of your debt, when you passed away and now you have no debt going to your family, no, did it do its job? Right. It did its job. Right. And this is how you, another one way you can create generational wealth. So there's a term policy and what other kinds are there? So the, the second type is ROP, which basically stands for return of premium meaning anything you put into the policy, you'll get back, right? So if you say, hey, I pay $100 a month, $1,200 a year, $36,000 after 30 years, whatever you put into the policy, the policy is going to give it back to you, right? So let me ask you a question. If you pay thirty six grand into a policy, do you think $36,000 today is going to have the same value 30, 30 years from now? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Right. Cause I, I don't see taxes and inflation going down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you 
it's going it's like it's going down right so yeah i mean it's, it's only going to continue to rise so you know although it sounds good on the surface that money you know you basically let someone borrow your money for 30 years and you know it, it, with no interest and you know obviously combating inflation on top of that so you know it's just like 30 years ago three grand was a lot how fast did we go through three thousand dollars today yeah <laughs> it's quick <laughs> yeah yeah it's-, it's quick so um the thing is th- those policies again they have their place in the market um but they're, they're they work like a term policy but they're also more expensive than a permanent policy so is there is there a uh, uh, uh a type of person or a type of situation or scenario that folks could benefit more on that type of policy as opposed to a, a term? Um, yeah, it, 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 I would say it would just depend on the person. Like what, what are they trying to achieve by when? Yeah. Like what, like what is, yeah, because it's, I was, I hate giving on like general advice because when it comes to insurance, everybody you know, their health is different. Their age is different. Their finances right. are different. It, it all just depends on, and the, you know, their goals and aspirations are different as well. So um, it just truly depends on what that person is trying to achieve because those policies make sense for certain people, just like term policies make sense for certain people where it may not for certain people. So you, you'll you hear a lot of blanket statements about the insurance. Oh, don't even touch a term policy. They have no value. But again, if somebody's on a limited budget and they want to protect their legacy and they don't want to do a GoFundMe, you know, then a term is a good solution for them. Yeah, and you see so much of that, you know. The, Go the GoFundMes, the the barbecues, the fish fries, the t-shirts, all of those things are avoided. It, all of those things could be avoided if someone had the conversation with them. Yep. So the other aspect that I'm seeing here is what's labeled income asset protect. And uh, how does that work? Explain that. This 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 is huge. This is one of the reasons it that opened my eyes when I got into the insurance space because, you know, being being the you know a single income uh being in a single income house, I said if God forbid something happened to me, um, and I'm not able to work, you know, my family goes backwards. We go back into poverty. Yeah. Right. So this is big for, you know, single mothers, single fathers, you know, even 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 married couples, because if one of the incomes in the house stopped, you know, was stopped functioning or stopped flowing, how does that affect your family? Right. Right. Because how many people do we know, um, you know, uh, you know, fall sick, you know, illnesses, stroke, cancer, uh, heart attack you know, illnesses that, you know, we, we don't need like multiple, like there, let me, let me tell you the reason why this one's important to me. Like in, I want people to understand it and I'm telling them through my story, which I know everyone has their own story. Right. But for me, my, my mom is, you know, she's a single mom. She worked two jobs, sometimes three um, and supporting me and my brother. So I said, you know, while we're growing up, both of my uncles get sick. Both of my uncles get sick. Both of her brother, her older brother and her youngest brother. One gets diagnosed with MS. The other one has a stroke and uh, is is legally blind. Wow. Both of them. And they both move into the house with us. So now you got my mom working two or three jobs, two kids and two brother, and her two brothers. And yeah, so I, I just said, man is there something that would have helped them if somebody would have educated them that could have changed the trajectory of their life, which inadvertently would have, would have, you know, affected my life. And there's this thing inside of policies, not all policies, but there's a thing called living benefits inside of certain insurance policies. And what that allows you to do is if you became sick, ill, or disabled, it would actually accelerate a portion of the death benefit and it would give it to you while you're alive. Meaning it's called a living benefit. Like life insurance is about life insurance. It's not just about death insurance. It's not, it's not called death insurance. It's called life insurance. Right. So this thing inside of ins- uh, policies called living benefits will allow people to accelerate um, a portion of their death benefit. So let's say they had a million dollars. They had a million dollar term policy. 
Okay. If they can accelerate 500, 600, 700, 800,000 of that policy, if they became, let's say they had a stroke or heart attack or cancer, and that was a single income or even a dual income family, and that person is not able to work, how do they go through their illness, you know, take care of their family, income, bills, all of that stuff when they're, no, when they're not able to work, right? Yeah. So if you get an insurance policy with living benefits and you could accelerate a portion of that money while, you know, you're sick and you're going through your, you know, going through your challenge, it takes away the financial burden aspect of it. So when we say income replacement, if you're working and you're not able to work anymore due to illness or sickness and you're able to, you know, recuperate some of that money, how did, you know, how does that affect your family? Right. So, you know, you say, hey, man, I'm not able to sit, I'm not able to work. You know, I can accelerate $200,000 from this policy. At least I don't have to worry about it. Now I can go get the best health care because we all know, you know, depending on where you live, you know, the health care may not be the best. You may want to go fly out to California. You may want to go fly out to somewhere to go get the best uh, health coverage, uh, best, best service. Right. So these with these they 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 from an income perspective it helps you protect that money uh, protect that income so that way your family can con- continue to thrive and move forward instead of going backwards if you became sick because so many people I know get sick and then you know they stay stagnant or they they go right. backwards because they no one educated them on this type of stuff. So what happens if let's say if you have that and then you you get sick and you get to the point where you you ain't going back to work. You're now you're just disabled. You're permanently disabled. So now would someone still take advantage of that benefit? Because it seems as though they can't work at all, and it, you might come to a point where it's, it's like <laughs> it's all just even in you know balancing everything out, right? I mean, if you're yeah, you're paying on the insurance, but then you're taking it right out at the same time. Or a, por- a portion of it, right? A portion of it, correct. Yep. Right, right. Wow. So, yep. so for example, I, I knew somebody in the tech industry. Uh-huh. You know, um, you know, husband, you know, husband, you know, his wife was a stay at home wife. He had, you know, two, three kids. He had two kids, right? You know, out in Silicon Valley, you know, in the, in the IT space. Again, someone, uh, you know, he he'd been paying into his insurance policy for for ten years. He probably contributed maybe fifteen thousand dollars into it over the over those ten years. Okay, and you know he gets diagnosed with cancer of the esophagus. Ooh. As soon as he gets diagnosed with cancer, his job says if you can no longer come to work, uh, we're gonna have to let you go. So they fired him. He gets diagnosed and he gets fired from his job. No other income in the family. Because he had a policy with living benefits, like I said, he contributed maybe fifteen thousand dollars over those ten years. Right. They cut him a check for eight hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand dollars. It was accelerated to him. He was able to go to the best cancer doctor out in in, in L.A., um, take care of his family. You know, was able to beat cancer. Because of someone educated him, a life insurance agent like myself educated him on the value of these policies and the features that will allow them to protect his income if he fell sick, um, had an illness or dis- or was disabled. So tell me, um, are there are there people starting to wake up to this? Because you know, this is like, I'll tell you honestly, this is like. The first that I'm really being open, I always knew about life insurance, of course, you know, mm-hmm. but but this particular thing right here, I mean, I, I, I it's pretty fascinating to me. And, and it's like that you can actually, you know, because we can never predict and so many people just get sick and just can't work anymore. And, and you can never pre- predict that. I mean, you know, a stroke or a or, or, cancer diagnosis a terminal illness or or you know even not so terminal just something that just has you KO'd for a few years you know um and having to go through treatments and all of that like battling cancer and then you know overcoming it I mean can get pretty pretty expensive and I mean are there people waking up to this or I guess that's why we're here (laughs) absolutely no you know you know, last year, so 2021, again, I'm, I'm talking about our community, but last year, 
54% of people who bought insurance were African American. Wow. 54%. So, like you say, are people waking up? Our people are now waking up. Not only because I'm gonna I'm break down the I'm gonna I'm gonna break down the how to create wealth inside of an insurance policy too. So not only just the protection side. In a second, I'm gonna tell you how to create wealth inside of it. And this is where people are really starting to understand. Okay, cool. I could use this as a tool. It's a wealth building tool, just right. like the wealthy people. Like how do I build wealth in this thing? So yeah, a lot of people are waking up to it. They're they're more receptive. And I think, you know, unfortunately, I think it was due to the pandemic. So now, how can generational wealth be acquired or passed on or created or maintained um, outside of insurance? So we know that, of course, something happens to you, your family gets a benefit. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's a way of them actually being able to handle things that's going on. But when we talk about, like, actual generational wealth, it's like, it makes me feel as though this is another thing here that we're actually putting money into to create that will eventually be. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, so the third the third type of policy is a permanent policy. So we talked about term. We talked uh-huh. about ROP. The third type of policy is a permanent policy. Again, permanent meaning exactly that. Instead of it being you know, 15, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, it's a policy that's going to last you the rest of your life, right? So as long as you pay it, you're going to have insurance the rest of your life because this is where, hey, you know, if you're 30 and you get a 30-year policy, you're 60, you know, you're still going to want insurance. So you're like, hey, what can I get that's going to last me the rest of my life? And this is where permanent policies come in. This is also where you have a guaranteed death benefit, meaning if you get a quarter of a million dollar policy, the policy is going to pay out a quarter of a million to your beneficiary. If you have a million dollar policy, a million dollars guaranteed going to get paid out to your benefit. Regardless, regardless, regardless of how long you've been paying it. Regardless, yep. Upon your demise, it's going to get paid out. It's going to get paid out. So we talk about, you know, we we hear about it like when we talk about Black Lives Matter. Hey, if everybody had a, a million dollar policy or a hundred thousand dollar policy, they'd stop, you know, stop killing us. <laughs> but no one told them, hey, this is the type of policy, or this is what you should get, or you don't see people. Uh, on mainstream media talking about, hey, go, hey, go look into this, right? Yeah. So this is where these policies, again, you know, there's a lot of different people in the world. If, if parents knew to go get a policy on their kids when they were younger, regardless of the route that they took, you know, they, whether it's professional, whether it's athletes, whether it's military, whether it's the streets, whatever it is, if they had a policy that was locked in for them when they were younger, again, now depending on their actions, they would still have a policy. You know what I mean? Right, right. So um, so this is, this is where those policies come into play. So there's a couple, you know, the component to it is, you know, it's, it's a guaranteed death benefit. The other part of it we talked about, it has a living benefit component like I talked about. So if anything happened to you, became sick or disabled, you, pay, you know, you can accelerate that, that death benefit. But here's the wealth building part of it. It's called the cash value. So these okay. things, it's called a cash value component. I really, I tell people, think about it like a savings account inside of your insurance policy. Think about it like a savings account inside of your insurance policy. As you're paying into your policy, you're, um, you know, you're paying the cost of your policy. A part of that money is going to go towards a cash value. Meaning, hey, if my policy, this is theoretical numbers. Let's say I'm paying $100 a month. Let's say 50% is going to be the cost of insurance. The other 50% is going to go to my cash value. This is where I can start building. Um, I can start saving money inside of my policy. Right. And, because they're in, and because they're indexed, so there's an, it's an indexing strategy, it's going to grow anywhere between 0 and 12% a year. 0 and 12%. And the 0 is a floor. I mean, it's contractual. So when the market crashes, you don't lose money. Meanwhile, you can gain anywhere up to 12, 15% a year. On average, they're about six to seven percent. But here, here, here's the here's the slick part to them. So yeah, you're saving money inside of your insurance policy, but as you're accumulating money into these policies, you also have access to it. I Meaning <laughs> you could you could borrow money, you can borrow against the so that zero to twelve percent. By the way, it's it's the growth on that money is tax free. It's tax free. Yeah. The growth on that money is tax free. So and you can leverage it tax free. Meaning. If you said over time I've accumulated a hundred thousand dollars and I want to go 
take fifty thousand dollars and go put into a uh, into a rental property. Right. Hey, cool. Hey, insurance company, I got fifty thousand dollars in my policy. I need to go borrow. I mean, I have a hundred thousand. I need to go borrow fifty. Yeah, and, okay. I, and that's okay. your money. Okay, doc. How do you want it? Where do you want us to send it? <laughs> And now when you borrow that money, here's the thing. This is where the wealthy people have, what they've known this for a long time. And we're just now, my goal is to share this with everybody I know. When you borrow that money out of your insurance policy, mm. you borrowed it, you bought that asset. Inside of your policy, it's still growing at 100000 as if you never touched it. It's a win-win. It's a win-win. You wait, we hear people talk about it. Hey, this is how I use my money twice. Hey, I've used, I flip my money twice. I use it twice. They're putting it inside of an insurance policy so that way they're able to use that same dollar twice. Now yep. I'm starting to get it now. <laughs> we'll talk about, oh, it's, you know, the, 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 the importance of insurance. I mean, on the, on the surface, people just think of just, oh, you know, death benefit or whatever, you know, but it is... <laughs> You know, Insur insurance companies, insurance companies, um, you know, if you pull up the first link I just sent you in the chat, you you'll see what I mean. If you're able to, if you're able to share that screen, are you able to or no? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're we're go we yeah. It's we'll get to sharing that. Okay. it now. We'll share. Okay. We're, yeah. Gotcha. So if you if you if you look if you look at that this link right here, it's actually a. It's a list of all the banks and how much money, how much assets they have tied into life insurance. Right now, you can see number one right now is Bank of America, $24 billion they have in life insurance. So when you say, hey, I put $100 into the bank and you know that they're going to take that money and go buy, they're going to go put it into something. We call, yeah. it's, called a, it's called a Corp A bond. They're going to put it into a corp A bond, and now they, they're able to make 8, 9, 10, 11, 12% off of that money while they give you 0.03%. Greg, this. <laughs> so now you see how these banks are also making money leveraging life insurance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yep. wow. So how can, why not? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, we, 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 we got a lot to talk about. I mean, we're out of time on this spotlight. Yep. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're going to definitely continue the conversation moving forward. But, like, for now, as the intro, as we've introduced you to to the folks, um, I want you to let everyone know how it is that they can contact you and contact your company. Absolutely. So, um, so for me directly, if you want to reach out to me on Instagram, it's I am Greg Skeen. So, I am. A M G R E G S K E E N E. That's on all platforms. So that's on um, Facebook, IG, um, and LinkedIn. Um, again, the name of the company, the website is uh, um, controlyourroute.com. And if you wanted to get you know, more direct, if you just go to meetgregskeen.com, so M E E T, gregskeen.com, you can click the link and book a one on one consultation free nice. of charge. Very nice. Greg Skeen, control your route. Brother, I am I, I, I'm, I'm so happy. You, you've blown me away here, man. You know, got me thinking about some stuff. Uh, <laughs> for oh, we real. Didn't even, we didn't even get into the retirement aspect and, and people you know, saving I, money during this recession. So we got we got a lot to talk yeah, about. <laughs> I, you know, this is, you're going to be seeing and hearing a whole lot more from control your route right here on WSME, SM Enlightenment Radio. Uh, we, we're just scratching the surface right here. But I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, brother, for for coming through and blessing the platform with, with you know, this the, the most important information, <laughs> you know. And, and it's like, I just never knew. I never knew. You know, and uh, hey, it's, it's, it's definitely fascinating. So, hey, once again, thank you so much, brother. All right. And, um, you know, we're going to look forward to speaking with you much more. And you can see more about Greg Skeen and uh, and control your route on on WSME, SM Enlightenment Radio, the, the website, SMEnlightenmentMedia.com. We're, we're going to um, create a little link for you there. All right. And also on the Facebook group on the SM Crew uh, 
WSME SM Enlightenment Radio Facebook group as well. And you'll be able also to see this video there as well. So, Greg, thanks so much, brother. All right. No, and, no. Uh, Pleasure is know. all mine. I appreciate it, Doc. Yeah, man. And I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to speaking with you more right here on WSME SM Enlightenment Radio. This has been the spotlight. Thanks so much, Greg. You too. God, God bless. Thank you.